My first kiss, oh, ob okay, so oddly, I wasn't a child actor, but my dad had a friend who was a casting director, and they were casting a music video for an artist named Brenda Russell. I kissed a, a young boy who was also in the music video. His name was Floyd. So my first kiss was technically on set. And then I wasn't on set again for, you know, over a decade after that. But that was my first kiss. It's, it's on camera. It's immortalized for life. I was six. I really liked it. The video is this idea of they're trying to get back to their, their child self, the, the younger version of this marriage that's falling apart. And so I'm in a wedding dress. Well, that's the first kiss. We get married. But I'm six, but it feels, I feel very adult. And I remember that day feeling very adult, so it didn't scare me. I was sort of, I felt like I was born for this. <laughs> I think about Floyd every so often, actually. I'm here to talk about Sylvie's love. The idea was to make a film in the style of those sort of classic sprawling love stories that Hollywood has made so often, but to center two black leads, which has not been done as often enough as it should be. If you took those, you know, beautiful Gordon Parks photos and you zoomed in just on the woman in the photograph, and not to ignore the historical context of the colored only sign, but to not make that the focus, to sort of change the aperture, and that's what we wanted to do. In the beginning, in 57, when you meet her and she's young and she's wearing these sort of T-length dresses, um, and there's something sort of constricting about them. And suddenly you see her in like little jeans and a sweater, and clearly she feels freer and more herself. My favorite look is when she finally gets the job. She works up from an assistant at this television show to finally being the producer, and you see her in this little sweater, and her hair is pulled back with a scarf, and you see her in this really smart pencil skirt. It feels like stylistically she's coming into her own. Yeah, I stole one of the pointy bras because I loved it so much. I thought it was so glamorous, so I, I pinched that from set. And I wore the garter and the whole to-do. I tried to cheat once and just wear my regular underwear. I don't have a go-to karaoke song. I feel like every day when we were shooting Sylvie's Love, I would listen to Nancy Wilson's How Glad I Am. Um, but I can't sing like Nancy Wilson, so I wouldn't imagine singing it at karaoke, but that song, I think, is one of my most favorite love songs. With my very own money, um, I, bought a, I bought a box set of The Beatles, all their greatest hits, and I bought Joni Mitchell, Blue. Blue used to be my favorite record. Now my favorite record for the past couple years has been um, The Hissing of Summer Lawns. In the past, for the Roses was my favorite record probably for a six year straight period and I listened to it incessantly. I remember my sister coming into my bedroom once when we were teenagers and going, oh, you listen to the most depressing music. <laughs> because I would listen to, on loop, on loop, 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 I would listen to Joni Mitchell's Blue or I would listen to Miles Davis' Sketches of Spain. When you're in a slump or you're feeling melancholic, when you listen to melancholic music, at least for me, you feel slightly less alone. So. It isn't depressing in a way if you're sort of already in that space. We used to, by necessity, shop at a lot of thrift stores when I was a kid, yeah. both my parents, and I hated it as a kid, you know, because it felt embarrassing to have to shop at thrift stores. And um, But now I have an uncanny ability when I'm passing a thrift store, I feel cosmically drawn to go inside of it, and then I find something remarkable and something that is so devastatingly underpriced. I've gotten some, some interesting things. I've often fantasized actually about being on, you know, like Antiques Roadshow, because you bring home some weird relic. The idea that you could unearth something rare and interesting and something that everyone thought didn't have value and then find out that it does, I love that idea.